Okay, on to homework problem three. Uh, we are going to start in our collisions now. If a pool ball is thrown directly at a stationary bowling ball at a velocity of 40 feet per second, and the bowling ball moves off in the same direction at 2 feet per second after it is hit, then determine the velocity and direction of the pool ball after the collision. The pool ball weighs 0.5 pounds and the bowling ball 15 pounds. Okay, before you say, why would you ever throw a pool ball at a bowling ball? <laughs> uh, I just have to suspend this belief and try to imagine what this would look like. So I'm going to start off by drawing a picture here, and then I'll do the calculations on the homework page. So we've got our before situation where we have a pool ball being thrown directly at a stationary bowling ball. And I'll put my after on this side. So I've got my bowling ball, it's pretty big, I'll call it B, B for the second thing and also B for bowling ball. Its initial velocity is going to be zero, it's stationary, okay, and we're also told its weight is 15 pounds. So that's my before condition for my bowling ball. My uh, pool ball, I'll make that a little smaller here, I'll call it A. It has a weight of half a pound, of 0.5 pounds, and it's being thrown um, at a velocity, we'll call that VA, of 40 feet per second. And remember from my equation here, <clears throat> I can use weight instead of mass. I'll take a look at that here. Um, and then I have my body A and body B, and remember one is my before condition and two is my after condition. <clears throat> so I'm going to call this condition one here, where this is all getting ready to impact. And then after, I'm going to have a situation where, let's see, we've got the pool ball and the bowling ball. So I've got A and B, no loss in their weight, so I'll put this weight of A. So weight of A is still half a pound. Weight of B is still 15 pounds. But afterwards, we're going to have the bowling ball moving off in the same direction as the pool ball was thrown at 2 feet per second. So I'm going to have this velocity of B equal to 2 feet per second. And then I'm going to have the pool ball at some velocity that I don't know. Now it tells me here, um, it asks me here to determine the velocity and direction of the pool ball after the collision. In this picture, my reference frame, everything in my before and my after, everything going to the right is positive. So in order to make sure, oh, I've got my two a little bit off the camera there. In order to make sure that this frame of reference is going to give me a good sign afterwards, I'm going to go ahead and make this final velocity of A also point to the positive direction. That way when I solve it, if I get a negative answer, I know that it actually should be pointing in the opposite direction. So that's one way, some people are asking me some questions about signs. That's one way to think about your signs. When you're setting it up for your unknown, just make your unknown positive in your drawing. And then when you solve for it, if it comes out to be negative, well, then you know it's opposite to the way you drew it. So that's kind of an easy way to picture it and then to translate that into a calculation. Okay, I've got my drawings here. I've got all my information. I'm going to put it into an equation. I'm not going to be able to fit all this on the screen, so I'm going to put that to the side and just write out my equation here for what that's going to look like. So I have, I'll go ahead and write the original equation. I have WA and VA uh, plus WB, VB, and that's all my before, and that's going to equal my weight times velocity plus weight times velocity of B after. So conservation of momentum, I have to have that before equal the after. Let's plug some values in. I said my weight, uh, I called A the pool ball, so this was 0.5 pounds. Its initial velocity was 40 feet per second, 
and I said that was in the positive direction so I'll just leave that as it is um, then I had the weight of the bowling ball which is 15 pounds but it was stationary to start with so its velocity in the before condition was zero now I've got my after terms afterwards everything stays the same weight but we don't know what the velocity of the pool ball is that's our unknown and then we've got the weight of the bowling ball that's going to go off in the same direction as the pool ball came into it at two feet per second so that's also positive so i'm just leaving that um, without a sign which means positive okay in order to solve this before you start um, doing a lot of moving things from side to side the best idea is to simplify each side as far as you can before you start trying to solve for this VA. So let's simplify these terms before we start trying to get VA by itself. Basically when we're doing algebra, remember from math, we want to put our like terms together before we start isolating the variable. So this one we know is going to go to zero, so that's gone. But we've got 0.5 times 40, so that's going to be 20 pound, and remember we're going to get this funny units here but that's okay 20 pound foot seconds and then I'm just going to rewrite this one a half pound VA plus and then 15 times 2 is going to give me 30 pound foot seconds okay now I've simplified that pretty good I've got two terms on either side that are constants with the same units so I can combine those easily I think what I'll do is I'll leave my variable here. I mean, you could do it either way. I'm going to choose to leave this term here and subtract the 30 from both sides. So let's go ahead and do that. Minus 30 pound foot per second. And I'll do the same thing here. Minus 30 pound foot per second. So that's going to make this term go away on this side. That'll go to zero. Here, I have a 20 minus a 30. So that's going to give me a negative 10. And I've got to keep those unit pound foot seconds. My units don't cancel there because I'm subtracting, not dividing. I'm subtracting, so I have to keep the units. And that's equal to the 0 0.8, I'm sorry, 0 0.5 pound VA. Okay. Now I'm to the point where I can isolate that VA. I've got a constant on one side. I've got a variable here with a coefficient. It's going to divide each side by that coefficient, divide each side by the 0 0.5 pounds, 0 0.5 pounds. Now I can cross off because I'm dividing, and 0 0.5 will cross off too. I'm left on this side with VA. Here I have a negative 10 divided by a 0 0.5, which is really the same thing as negative 10 divided by a half. If I'm dividing by a half, it's the same thing as multiplying by 2, but you can certainly put that in your calculator too. Um, a negative divided by a positive is going to give me a negative, and it's a negative 20. These pounds will cancel, and I'm left with feet per second. Okay, so let's go back and look at the original drawing. <clears throat> if my VA here um, that I drew in is winding up to have a negative sign, that means it's going to go opposite in the opposite direction to my to the right um, frame of reference that I established. So I can leave that with a negative sign, or I can say to be more accurate that VA is equal to 20 feet per second in the opposite direction of the bowling ball. So I'll put what it's kind of referenced to. But if you've got a drawing or you've got some way in your test uh, on your final exam to show me what that negative means, that's okay. But it's always good to kind of think about, okay, what's it relative to in um, my original problem. And so it's going to be the opposite direction of the bowling ball. You could also say it's the opposite direction of the way the pool ball was thrown initially, you know, opposite to its initial velocity, that would be fine too. 
Okay, that is problem number three. I'll be back in a little bit with problem number four.